This video is going to go over how to use solar analysis uh, in Revit for quick solar studies of designs and uh, also for an understanding of how a building sits on its site and where are the hot points that will need to be dealt with on the facade. The first thing to do is if you don't already have it, you'd click on the Analyze tab. You likely don't already have Solar Analysis on your Revit. This is currently in beta testing from Autodesk Labs. Um, it's new to Revit, but it was previously uh, in Vasari for several years. And uh, now it's, as Vasari has been discontinued, it's graduated and is moving into Revit as a add-in. If you don't have it, it's still free because it's in beta. So if you go to the betaautodesk.com, you can scroll and find Solar Analysis for Revit and join, join that beta testing and you'll be able to use it on your projects and also give them feedback for the, the tool. So once you have it installed and loaded up, what we're going to do is test some different facade types and different shapes and see how they respond to um, to the uh, solar solar radiation uh, hitting them. So to do that, of course, first thing you need to do is make sure you're in the right location with all with all of these with all of these tests. You really want to make sure you're where you want to be. So in this case, we're going to say Philadelphia. And right now, it always puts us right on City Hall in Philadelphia. But as we've done before, you can always move it around. So I'm going to leave my location at the center of Philadelphia. OK. And now I should be ready to test it. Um, I've modeled all of these walls facing south. So if I go to a plan, you can see south. Is on the bottom of the drawing. You can always make adjustments again to your position by rotating true north. If you're actually slightly off of south, rotate your true north to be the correct direction. And to do that, you always want to say how, how your floor plan is viewed. Instead of project north, you say true north. And once you've done that, you can come back and rotate true north, you get a rotation, and you can click. And I believe Philadelphia is 8 degrees off. You can type 8 if you want to be that precise. I am actually not going to. I'm going to leave facing directly south because this test isn't necessarily a real facade. What I'm going to do is I'm going to test four different types of um, solar shading just to see which one is the most effective. So this isn't about a specific direction right now. This is just about which one of these four layouts is going to be more effective at blocking the sun sunlight hitting our wall. So once that's done, and there, once everything's installed, come to Analyze, click on Solar Analysis. It's, it's ready to, um, to start testing. So with this, what we're going to want to do is we're going to say, I'm going to select pieces I want you to test. That can go away. You'll see your option bar now is ready to select things. Move this other way. You can just stretch over and select everything, or come back the other way and select everything. Now, one thing when doing this is When you're modeling, don't use imported families for this test. This test is very specific. It generally will work on masses, and it'll work on um, system families. So for example, out of these shapes, what I have, well, let me reselect. What I have is, these are just floors one inch deep floors spaced out over in front of a wall. Same thing, floors. With this one, 
um, I just made another thick wall in front of this wall and I actually edited its profile and punched a bunch of holes in it. So again I'm using all system families here. Here is a little experiment. This is actually a mass with a family, an adaptive curtain panel loaded into it. So we'll see how that reacts. I know masses work. I don't know if uh, adaptive curtain panels within masses work. So it's a bit of a test right there. So then once we've, we've already selected everything, we hit finish, go to sun setting. And what you can do is pick the range that you want to test. So for example, with this test, it was set on a full year. So this is a full year, sunrise to sunset, all year. Let's make sure it sticks. Sometimes it jumps back. So with that ground plane as at the ground level, you have some other presets you can pick. So you can do the one year, then you don't have to type anything in. And the only difference is it puts it in 2010, but that doesn't make that much of a difference. But whatever, whichever one you do, always do sunrise to sunset so you know that you get all of your data. So you can do winter, fall, summer, spring, or just pick some days. Or you can do a single day or a single moment. So this would be a one time of day. This is an entire day and understanding how the heat hits the building. And multi-day is all these different presets. So go back to in session because that is 2015, January 1st to December 31st. I can hit, you can also save the settings as a different preset if you want. And so this just explains how the results are brought up. Sometimes BTUs make a lot of sense. Instead of kilowatt hours per meter square, I would do BTUs per uh, square foot. We can always adjust this, the solar analysis default. I'll show you what that is. And then these are just the different things. What's the hottest time? What's, what's the average hour at, at the time that you're doing? But what we're really doing is just the overall heat on the building throughout the year in our one-year study. So we're going to do the cumulative. Leave all that, and we're kind of ready to go. So we're going to hit Analyze, and there's going to be a bar that appears here as it starts the run. And I don't know how long this is going to take right now, so I'm going to let it run, and I'll come back. Oh, I'll come back when there's results. Oh, all right, well, there's results right there. So you can first thing you see is the colors don't make a whole lot of sense. What's going on? Why is everything green? And that's because Revit's defaults. I grab this little there's our little legend here. It tells us what's going on. Revit's defaults are a little weird. So we'll click on this and it gives us a chance to edit the style. And Solar analysis default, that's fine, but what's wrong with your legend? It doesn't make any sense. So come to color, and as most people are used to reading these heat, di heat diagrams and false color mappings, you want the hot part to be red, the cold part to be blue, the middle to be yellow. Okay, now that makes a little more sense. <laughs> It's just easier to read than before. So, a few things learned already. Even though this is modeled as a mass, it has a loaded curtain panel family in it. And because of that, this does not test it. You can see it's still its original color, which is more or less what we thought it was going to. We, we need to stick to the system families when we do this. Um, you can make a mass, just make solid forms out of the mass in the project, and don't load in families into the mass like I have done here. All of the other system families worked. You could see the heat is hitting both the uh, shading device and the wall behind it. So let's just look at the, uh, the information that we received. This is um, showing how many 398,000 
BTUs a square foot throughout the year is the red part. And it, and it breaks it all down to what you're getting. One uh, tip is if you want to test one um, solar shading device against some others, it is best to run the test on all of them at the same time, because then this scale will remain exactly the same. The, hot, the red it will be the exact same red from one to the other. If you run them at different um, orientations or in different setups, or even with, even if you don't select all these faces and you leave off the hottest face on the top, that'll change the entire um, scale, and your legend will not be correct between two different results. So it is good to have all of your little uh, test studies in one uh, file that you can do a one test on. So you can look at the results. You can see, obviously, it's the hottest right at the top where the first piece is getting hit. That sets the scale. Um, if you find everything is too homogeneous throughout, you can select all of the faces except these top two faces. And that gives you more of a scale spread out. And the, obviously, you would not want those selected on any one of these on the top ones. And that, that would let you see a little bit more what's happening. But just from looking at it from afar, this wall is basically our control since this device doesn't work. It is good to have a control in here. And so that orange is basically as hot as it's going to get if it's just a vertical wall. So this spread out version of this option obviously produces a hotter wall behind it. And then if you look in closer, this one just starts to almost get into blue in some certain spots. Almost. So it's doing a little bit better than this one. This one, you can ignore the top. The top, what's happening is just doesn't have any more fins above it. So it's not, it's, look right in the middle. You want to look in the middle where you're getting the full field action from your solar shading. So that's just a simple way of testing several different solar shading devices using the solar analysis plugin built into Revit. And obviously you can crop the view, you can change its scale, and you can come and export it as a JPEG. Save it as an image, just like that. And you'll have that test, and you can uh, always uh, save it Give it, um, include it in your presentation so it's clear why you chose this one device or this other device for shading your building and just back up your design. That's it.